G'day, how are you? Welcome back to the Green and Gold Life. So today, we're gonna to plant a uh, rose against my woodshed here. Uh, this is a north facing aspect for the shed wall, so uh, the rose should get plenty of sunlight all day long. I've also procured myself a, uh, a wine barrel uh, to plant it in, so uh, it should look quite nice. So we need to prepare that before we go putting the rose in it. Alrighty, let's get to it, eh? Alrighty, so here's our pot here a uh, 300 litre wine barrel chopped in half. So we need to do a little bit of preparation before we uh, throw our rose in this bad boy here. So you can see, there's a bit of, there's a bit of wine, sediment and whatnot uh, left over in the barrel. So we're gonna fire up the gurney and blast all that out. And then uh, what we're gonna do as well is secure these rings. So as the slats lose moisture, they tend to shrink up a little bit. Then you have the potential for this ring to slip down and uh, it doesn't look good. Um, so what we'll do is we'll secure these with the tech screw and then, uh, and then in the bottom we'll break out the drill and drill in some drainage holes. Alright, let's get to it. Alrighty, with your best cup of tea and impact driver here, you're gonna to want to run a couple of tech screws into uh, into the bands. I'm probably gonna do four per band: um, 12 o'clock, three o'clock, six o'clock, and nine o'clock. Um, that way, they've got plenty of meat hanging on. I'm using a 10 gauge 16 millimeter tech screw here. Uh, so these are these are self-drilling metal tech screws, uh, galvanized as well, so they're not gonna rust, and I uh, don't have to drill pilot holes. So I'll just. Uh, just smack these in. Alrighty, time to smack some drainage holes in. There we go there, so I've got about 10 or 12 in the bottom there, just with me, um, me biggest drill bit possible. Um, yeah, what we're doing is look to relieve uh, all of the water build up. Um, obviously we want the potting mix to carry a little bit of moisture, but not to be waterlogged. All right, now it's time to plant this bad boy up. All righty, so we're gonna put it here, smack bang in the middle of the woodshed. Now for me, this is a thoroughfare for irrigation and that. So uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of future proofing, burying a uh, 90 mil conduit. For, uh, for future irrigation. So uh, I don't really want to go move this too many times because it's, uh, it's a bit heavy. So um, yeah, it's gonna bury that just in case. All right. going to be sitting on the wall and back here at the same time we're going to want to make this level so I'm going to, have to chock up the back with, uh, with some bricks or something uh, nice and level with the front of the wall.
Alrighty, so this is gonna be in position for quite some time. It's gonna be heavy and you're not gonna to wanna to shift it much. So it's best to consult a being uh, higher than oneself for its final position, the cook. Alrighty, now we've got this bad boy sorted, it's time to get the rose in. One way I like to do this is to uh, set the potting mix in the bucket with the Stanley trimmer, cut the bottom, of the, the bottom of the bag and then lift it up. Piece of cake. Alrighty, I'm going to add a little bit of this sudden impact for roses as we go. so wide, it's about 700 wide. Uh, you know, the middle point is about 350 to 400 mil off the shed. So uh, I'm actually gonna plant the, the bare root stock a little bit closer towards the shed. That way the plant hasn't got so far to go to get back to the shed. To over exaggerate, if I had to plant it right out the front, it'd have to go all the way back there. But if I plant it uh, just this side of center, at least it's close enough to the shed, she ain't got far to go. So you want to be careful not to plant above the grafting point uh, on the rootstock because it'll sucker if you do that. Alright, so I've just taken the tag off here so we can archive back inside for a uh, referral later if we need it. Alrighty, all that's left to do is water it in and mulch up. Alrighty, so uh, we're going to use a little bit of sea salt here to help reduce transplant shock. Uh, we've got this old sea salt uh, we got from Bunnings, so uh, I'm going to try and get rid of all of this in the garden because it's, uh, it's quite empty. This stuff here from the plant doctor could be procured um, at a much more reasonable rate. So uh, just gonna use this for the garden and save this for the lawn. All right. Alrighty, so application rate for sea salt, they're telling me is 30 millilitres per nine litres of water. So the boy's got a nine litre watering can here and I'm guessing 30 mils is about a lid fill. and it's saturated as, it's still important to water in um, your rootstock. Uh, that way um, you're removing all of the air bubbles and anything trapped around the roots. Your apprentice is going to give me a hand to water in. Okay, buddy, you ready? Yeah. As you can see, we're all done. So all that's left to do now is to uh, hook it up to the irrigation. So uh, there's a few pipes running past there that I can hook into, but I've got to hook into the right one. So there's a little bit of a trick I can show you in a future video. And uh, I've also got to put up some kind of uh, trellis for it to climb on, but uh, problem for another day. <laughs> Alrighty, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like and uh, consider subscribing to the channel. Alrighty, I'll chat you on. Yeah.